Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be giving you an overview of the Lapvanced platform. So when you log in, in the upper corner here, I'm already logged in, what you're going to see is our landing page. And there's tons of great information on this page, so I'll go ahead and link a video in the upper corner that goes through that in detail. On our platform, you're going to see several tabs off to the left here. We're going to start with the dashboard. The dashboard has a lot of information that is going to be super useful for um, walking through the overview of the platform in many different steps. So there will be videos and different information that you can click on. The next tab is going to be the tab that you're going to work on the most. This is the My Studies tab. This is where we're going to find all of the studies you've been working on, so we'll come back to that in a second. Third tab down is going to be shared studies. If you're part of a lab or a group license, this is where you're going to see the studies that have been shared with your account and that you have accepted. The files tab is going to show any files that you have uploaded within an experiment as well as within this tab. So you don't have to be working on an experiment to upload a file. You can just click upload file here and it brings up a window of the files on your device. Also in this tab, which is not shown right now, but it will be after I start a recording, is going to be any participant recordings. So voice recordings, screen recordings, things like that will show up as red folders and those are going to be private folders. Moving on is the experiment library. And this is going to show all sorts of studies that have been publicly uploaded by other users that you can access. The next tab is the My Account tab. And this is where you're going to find all of the information about your account. This is just a test account, um, but essentially it's the same thing. So you can update personal preferences. You can see um, how many recordings you've done, how much of your storage has been used, and things like that. Finally, there's a log out button. So let's return to the My Studies tab and let's walk through creating a new study. You're going to click New Study in green here, or you can click Import or Upload a Study, which is going to bring up a window of how to import a study. So let's say I'm looking for a study from the experiment library. I can click this Import button and type in the study name. To create a new study on your own, we have tons of different options just from the get-go to get you started. I'm going to leave everything as is just to show you how it looks. So when you create a new study, it gets opened up right here, and then we get a walkthrough of the study design tab. In the study design tab, we have tasks, blocks, sessions, and groups, and these are arranged hierarchically. So tasks are the smallest unit and groups are the largest unit. This is also how we do our within and between subjects balancing. So the way to do that is going to be to add all of the tasks that you need. So let's say I have um, an experiment here. Let's say this is my introduction. Okay, and then let's say I have a finished task that has a crowdsourcing link. So now I've got my three tasks. And let's also say that I have two versions of the experiment. So we'll just call this experiment two. And I can rearrange these by clicking and dragging. And so I want all of my participants to see the introduction. And then some of them are going to see experiment one, experiment two. And maybe some of them are going to see experiment two first. And then everyone is going to see the finished task. Essentially, you can create lots of different structures. And I go more into detail in a separate video, so I will link this in the top right as well. So this is the study design tab. We can rearrange, we can do all sorts of things here. Moving on, if you notice when we're in the My Studies tab, we get another list of tabs that we can open within the My Studies tab. These are all pertaining to the one particular study that you have open at this moment. So if I open the task editor, this will take me to the first task in my study, and then I can work my way down through my tasks using this drop down here. Remember, by default, all new tasks are going to start with this text box called instructions. 
please please read this as well as check out the video that I am linking in the top right here. This is just a quick walkthrough, so again, please look for these videos that have more in-depth explanations here. Essentially, the task editor is going to help you create all the tasks in your study, as well as the randomization, the balancing, all the different recordings that are going to be needed per task. There is a separate video about tips and tricks for using the task editor correctly, and I will have that linked here as well. So walking through, we have lots of different menus here. This is our factor tree, draws and conditions window, both of which are explained in the introductions. These are all of the objects that you can add to a task. If you click on each of these icons, you get lots of different options popping up. You can use canvas frames or page frames, again, explained in a separate video. You can change the frame settings, and this is where you can program all of the events that are going to be needed in your study. You can also check any variables you've created. Moving further down, now we have study settings. So this is pertaining to the study as a whole that you have open. So we've got some main settings, which is gonna be things like time zones, um, how you want to count participants, how you want to balance people between groups, any sort of demographic information that you want us to ask, um, but no one sees this except you as the researcher and it's all de-identified by participant ID. Then we have information about browsers and devices. So who can access your study on what device and if there needs to be any minimum um, qualifications of that device. So screen resolution, screen size, etc. Then we have experiment features. So is this a multi-user study? Um, just remember if you click transform to a multi-user study, it is not reversible. So just be sure that you really want to make this a multi-user study which means that a participant cannot start it alone. There has to be someone else in the waiting room to be paired with them. You can add any recordings, any um, eye tracking. All the eye tracking information is going to be in here. Once I've activated it, lots more menu items pop up, and this is where you can set the eye tracking exactly how you'd like, including calibration error, um, the strictness of the chin rest constraint, uh, calculation mode, and any sort of performance requirements. So this is that study settings tab. Next we have the description tab. Before you can publish your study, we do require that you add description to it. And this is helpful to participants so they know kind of what they're starting, as well as other users if you choose to publish in the experiment library. This information is necessary. Next we have the variables tab. This is where you can see any and all of the variables that are in your study. So the system variables are things that we have already included. So these are gonna be there by default, things like subject number, trial number, condition ID, um, block name and number, things like that that are necessary to run any study. So we've got lots of those. You can also um, kind of customize what you're looking at. But remember, before your study gets published, you do have to confirm that your variables are recorded the way you want and that you have checked this. So this button is basically saying, yes, I know what I'm recording, I'm ready to publish. In the media tab, you'll see any media that you've added to your study specifically. So it's different from the files tab that was on the previous screen because the files tab shows any files that are in all of the studies in your account or just in your account in general. The media tab is specific to this study. So this will be any images, videos, audio clips, etc. In the translate tab, you can click through your tasks and find any elements that require a translation. So you can add a new language, you can enable translations, delete translations, and we also have information about static strings. Static strings are going to be these things here that we have already added to your study. So things like how the study appears when a participant first starts it. So there will be a text that says the study is available in multiple languages if you've enabled that. And then, you know, you can enable the translation. So there's this little information box here if you need to pause the video and read that to understand static strings better. Next is the run tab. And this is how you're going to do test runs and enable recordings. So if you like what you've got so far, but you're not quite sure if it's ready, 
do a test run, and this does not record any data. It basically allows you to go through the study as if you were a participant without recording anything. Then you have to enable recording first before starting a recording session. And what this does is it locks editing. So when I click enable recording, now I cannot edit the study and this prevents you from making edits while a participant is doing your study. Um, as you can see, that would cause a lot of discrepancies and may cause the study to crash. So we don't allow that to happen. When you disable recordings, it will delete all recorded data that you already have. And the reason we do this is again, to protect you as the researcher from discrepancies in your data. So if five participants have already done the study and then you make a change that you know majorly affects the study, then those five data sets are no longer usable for you. So if you do need to make a change, download all of the data before or it will be deleted, okay? Next up is publish and record. You cannot publish until all of these conditions are green, which means they are valid and met. So this would be having a good description. Your study design needs to be valid. Data recording needs to be enabled. Variables need to be confirmed and you have to be the study owner. Once those are complete, this button will turn blue and you can click it. And there's a whole separate video for this process as well. In the sharing tab, you can share this study with other people in your lab license. They have to be in the same license as you, so the owner has to have added them. And then you just type in their username and click add, and then they can access. Once you have published your study, this window will also pop up at the bottom here where you can share your study in the library. And that's gonna be public to any and all researchers who have lab bands. In the data view and export tab, this is where you're going to see all of your data recordings. So everything that you have recorded is going to pop up in this sheet. And then what you can do is actually select which variables you want to be in the final data output. Okay, so let's say you don't actually care about the start and end times. I can unclick that and then they will not appear in the sheet that I'm going to download. You can also choose the format that you'd like to export in. We have lots of different options here. Once you're ready, you just click save and preview, but you have to click a recording first, of course. So I will link a video explaining this process. Finally, you have a way to get back to the main menu. So this is a super quick overview of the LabVance platform. Again, if you'd like detailed information, please, please check out the videos I have linked in the video and also in the description below. And I hope this was helpful. Thank you for joining LabVance.